Hello, Holy Family. I hope that everyone is doing well. We are in week seven now of this quarantine. And um, to give you an example of how I'm doing, I am currently sitting in a teepee that I made in my backyard. So that's where I'm at. Things are getting pretty primal around here. It's gonna be a Lord of the Flies type situation soon. Hopefully not, who knows. It's week seven, what can I say? Um, the other day, my husband was trimming trees and I decided to take some of the medium-sized limbs that he cut down and create the structure of a teepee and then cover the whole thing with limbs that had leaves on them still to create a canopy. Um, and I'm sitting in this thing right now and I have to say, I'm pretty happy about it. So anyway, the reason I'm talking to you about this is because your assignment this week is to create a piece of land art inspired as I was inspired to make this by an artist named Andy Goldsworthy. He's Scottish. He made amazing things. He's still alive, still making amazing things. And I'm going to show you some pictures from a book that I have of his work and talk about him just a little bit. Okay, so I actually want to show you pictures from a couple of different books. And this first one, I just want to show you these two pictures of Andy Goldsworthy working in London. This was in 1985. And in the first picture, you see him building this arch out of pieces of ice. And in the second picture, you see that whole arch collapsing. And I want you to look at the woman's face, the woman in the red scarf. In the second picture, you see that sort of shock on her face because she has just watched this artist work for hours and hours and hours to build this thing, only to have it collapse. But that's actually a big part of Andy Goldsworthy's work. None of it is ever meant to last. Which brings me to the next book. And the title of this book is Time. And the concept of time, moving forward, is a big part of his work. And I'll show you what I mean as I show you these pictures. So here's one, let's read the caption. 11 arches made between tides, followed the sea out, working quickly, waited for its return, sun, wind, clouds, rain. So that gives you an idea of what the weather and the environment was like when he was working. And it also tells you what he was doing. He collected these stones and then when the tide was out, he went and built 11 arches and then he just sat there and waited and took photos as the tide came in and washed away each one of those arches. Knocked them all down until it was just a pile of rocks. This one says, stick hole, spring into summer. So he started building this, he built it in the spring, and then he came back through the next few months and took photos as the ferns grew up and around it and eventually you can't even see it anymore. You can see the change of seasons in this one. In Scotland, they have very distinct seasons. This one says, dead hazel sticks collected from nearby wood partly burnt, laid on old bracken in anticipation of the new, revisited from late winter through to summer. So he collected sticks. You can see he has a fire going here and he has burnt some of the sticks so that the ends of them are black. And he laid them together, black part in the center to make this really pretty thing. And then he came back through the seasons to take photographs you see it's starting to fall apart there. It's really fallen apart now. And by the end, there really isn't any trace of it ever being there at all. So it's the passage of time. In these ones, he works with mud. This one says, dark, well-composted mud, enriched by the tree, made workable, pressed onto bark, 
an edge to cut the overcast light. The edge he's talking about are these sort of interior rectangles here. And it catches the light in an interesting way. And then he comes back, takes a picture of it as the mud has dried out and is falling apart. This one, he actually built this serpentine structure out of mud and moss. It says spring. Mud and moss worked into the roots of a beech tree, returned in summer. So he made this really cool thing and then came back and took a photo of it after it had partially washed away. Here's another one where you can see the change of the seasons from winter to spring. And what he did is he piled up the snow in this rectangle and he heaped it up so that the rectangle of snow, the outline of that rectangle, would melt a lot slower than all of the snow around it. So over time, everything melts and that rectangle is the last thing to go. Eventually it all melted, but it's kind of cool to just see this clean rectangle of snow remaining when almost everything else has melted away. This one says, hazel leaves, each stitched to the next with grass stalks, gently pulled by the river out of a rock pool, floating downstream, low water. So you see, he only ever works with natural materials. He needed something to pin all of these leaves together, and he used grass stalks to do it. So he puts this whole sort of long snake of leaves that he's created in this pool, and then the water pulls it down and pulls it out. And then it just starts slowly working its way down the river. This is a rock that he has covered with wet feathers, wrapped around a stone before the incoming tide. So as the tide comes in, washes all the feathers away. Here's another one where he did this same serpentine line. He does that a lot, and I think the reason is that it catches the light in really interesting ways. So it says, river clay worked into cliff face, brought to an edge to cut, catch, and turn the light. Up early, finished just before the sun touched the clay. Hot and windy, clay drying, fully dry the following day. So he pressed mud onto the side of these rocks and then photographed as the sun came up, catches all of these edges in interesting ways. And then as the sun moves across the sky, the light catches differently and the clay dries out it's almost like a person getting older, right? Our skin starts to get drier. We see a lot of wrinkles. And something that Andy Goldsworthy talks about is that people sometimes think that we're apart from nature, but we are actually part of nature. All of us are created from the same stuff. Mud, leaves, and people. This is one that's made out of ice, and he had to work through the dark, cold night to get this done. It says, reconstructed, refrozen icicles, second attempt, first try thawed, worked through the cold, dark night into day. And there are videos on YouTube. If you want to look up Andy Goldsworthy, there are so many really cool videos of him making work. And I've seen a video of him doing this. He broke up icicles. You see all those little pieces there? He broke them up and then used his breath to melt the ends 
and then stick them back together. And it was so cold that they refroze and he was able to make this really cool pattern. And then as the sun came up, the ice caught the light in this really spectacular way. So here's another one where he's thinking about light and the time of day, the passing of the light. It says, sticks laid in different directions to change with the light, late afternoon, early morning. So you can see in this first picture where it's late afternoon, the sun is over here and it's shining this way. You can tell by these shadows. And he's laid these sticks out in such a way that when the sun is coming from this direction, these sticks look dark and these sticks look light. And then here in the morning, when the light is coming from this direction, the sunlight catches the sticks in such a way that these sticks now look light and these look dark. But it's the same sticks. They just look different with the passage of time and light. Here's another technique that he uses that I think is so beautiful. Um, in these wet places, it says raining, yellow leaves stripped away from central vein, lying flat following contours of rock. So he's pasted all of these wet leaves onto this wet stone to create this rectangle. And here he's using that same technique. It says leaf, river, stone. And he paints this whole picture, again with this serpentine pattern that he loves so much. Paints this whole large rock pastes leaves onto it and then as they dry they simply blow away. There's another one that I think is just so beautiful where he pasted wet leaves onto a rock and you know this must have taken him so much time and it's worth it because look how beautiful it is even though you know that fairly quickly here it's going to dry out and all those leaves are going to blow away. And one last one, just because I think this is so beautiful, how he uses these wet leaves, pastes them onto this stick and creates that beautiful gradient of colors. So I could go on and on. I love looking at these pictures, but I'm gonna switch to a video now that I took yesterday of the teepee that I made and talk a little bit more about the philosophy of Andy Goldsworthy, him thinking about time and nature and all of these things. So, switching over now. So here is the teepee now. I built it this morning and now it is evening time. And you can see the leaves are wilting. Some of these branches were cut yesterday, some of them were cut today, so they're all going to die eventually. But for now, they create this nice green canopy over the entire structure of the teepee, which is made of sticks. And um, this thing is eventually just gonna fall apart. And that's okay, because it wasn't made to last. It was made to be temporary. Um, all of these land artists, like Andy Goldsworthy, all of these people who work in nature, all of their stuff is temporary, right? None of it is concreted into the ground. None of it is trying to assert itself and live forever because nothing in nature lives forever, right? So it's something about the cycles of life and the beauty of life and the fact that because things don't last forever, it sort of makes them all the more beautiful because you just have to appreciate them in the given moment. You have to appreciate what you have in front of you at the given moment knowing that it's all going to change eventually. There are all of these lessons to be learned from nature, from art, um, and these are some of the ideas that people like Andy Goldsworthy are thinking about and trying to communicate through their art, as well as just enjoying being outside, working with your hands, enjoying the beauty of nature, and just being at peace within it. So one of these days this whole thing is going to collapse, but for now, it's a really fun teepee slash fairy house that you can crawl into and enjoy the peacefulness of this little pocket of nature.
So your art assignment this week, as you can probably guess, is to go outside, gather up a bunch of natural materials, leave flowers that have fallen to the ground, um, pieces of grass, twigs, mud, whatever you can find, and make something cool out of it. Um, you could do something three-dimensional. You can make a house out of sticks or a miniature teepee out of sticks, and little sculptures like that. Or if you want to do something two-dimensional, you can lay out leaves on the ground or other things on the ground and make a picture. And then take a picture of it, upload it to our Photo Circle album, and you're done. Just let the materials that you used go back into the ground. The only rule with this is that you must use only natural materials. Nothing man-made whatsoever. But as you are doing this, I hope that you're able to stay outside as you're creating because the weather is beautiful out here. Springtime in Florida is an amazing thing. And I know Earth Day was last week, but truly every day is Earth Day. We need to appreciate and take care of this amazing planet that God provided us. The nature is spectacular and precious. So let's enjoy it and let's take care of it. Okay, so now we are fast forwarding in time because I wanted to show you what became of the teepee, which is that it is no more. A few days after I built it, a strong gust of wind came through and toppled the whole thing over, and now you can see it over my shoulder. It's a pile of dried up sticks and leaves. So it goes. It was enjoyed while it was here, and that's really all that matters. Bee buzzing around my head. That's good. We love the bees. Anyways, please join me in the class prayer before we move forward. So let's take a moment and pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. To our Father we pray, keep us creative and curious for all of our days, amen. Okay, so before I send you guys out to go be creative outside, I want to show you a bunch of images by Andy Goldsworthy of his work. Um, so just sit back, relax, enjoy this slideshow, really look at these images. You'll see everything is made out of natural materials and they are absolutely gorgeous. So be inspired and I can't wait to see what you create. 